Searching for answers. Here are today's top stories. It's been over 24 hours. And the local news. What we see are a lot of things that are going on on the earth. This is Art of Heaven News Talk. Broadcasting live from WHPC Studios in Garden City, New York. This is Art of Heaven News Talk. We, this is where we deliver global, national, and local news through the lens of faith. I'm your host, Johnny Brummett, and joining me today are my co-hosts, certified mental health first aid trainer, Carol Duty, tech whiz, and former storm chaser, Dan Bartucci, and radio media personality, Arnold Kokok. If you want to join the conversation, you're always welcome. Lines are open at 516-572-7440. That's 516-572-7440. The biggest news in headlines this week is all things Olympics. So let's start right there. There's a whole lot to talk about, the the good, the bad, and the ugly about this Olympics. Let's start with the highly controversial opening ceremony, where in one scene, drag queens and dancers lined a long table in an image that sparked controversy after some connected the moment with Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper portrait of Jesus and his 12 apostles. It looks like, to me, I was just looking around every every day this week and it looks like there is just so many people everyone and their mom has chimed in on this so here's a few of those responses i'd like to share the french bishops conference issued a press release criticizing the performance it read in part the ceremony unfortunately included scenes of mockery and derision of christianity the release also said christians had been quote hurt by the outrageous and provocation of the performance. U.S. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson wrote on X that the drag show was shocking and insulting to Christians before he went on speaking about traditional values and quoting the Bible. Even Elon Musk wrote on X, that's not a surprise, extremely disrespectful to Christians. The Olympic artistic director Thomas Jolly said in a media briefing we wanted something that would unite people we didn't want anything subversive and there's also influencers out there like andrew tate who's actually muslim himself but was seen protesting on behalf of christians over this thought that was pretty wild and the last response i'll share is harrison butker's tweet on x where he wrote do not be deceived god is not mocked for what things a man shall sow, so also shall reap. For he that soweth in the flesh of the flesh also shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the spirit of the spirit shall reap lasting, everlasting life. Good for Harrison Bucker for pulling out the King James Version. But yeah, Galatians 6-7 is what is being referenced here. Look, as a Christian, it's it's appalling, right? And I don't know what, why we feel it's acceptable or, or how the director can come out and say, hey, we want something unifying, but we are going to mock um, what hundreds of millions of believers believe to have happened and a core tenet of our faith, what we find in Scripture. We don't see other gods or religions mocked openly like this. It would be interesting if somebody came out and mocked Muhammad or another uh, you know, deity in a ceremony like this, what's the point? It's the Olympics. What good could any of this done? I, I, I agree. I mean, the the travesty of it as well is how it's deterring. That's all you see in the headlines. Meanwhile, so many fantastic things are happening from these athletes, winning of gold and winning of silver and winning of bronze and dreams coming true and countries winning anything for the first time. But that seems to be like the buried story, like you're not hearing that. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you, Johnny, for mentioning how this Muslim actually stood up to protest on the Christian group's behalf. It reminded me of the scriptures, if we don't stand up, the rocks are going to cry out. Right. Right? You know, like if the Christians are not, you know, at least 
vocal about this. I mean, listen, Christianity is forgiveness and charity and love, of course. Um, but we don't take that freedom lightly. Um, and this is, you know, listen, religious belief goes so deep. You know, if you say something about people from Brooklyn, I get offended because I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> so when you talk about your faith, I mean, it's just so, so deep. And to your point, Dan, I was reading something about um, like a cartoon of Muhammad. And not that we would encourage that either. We're not saying this is a tit for tat, right? Like we, um, we're not saying that either. But there was an artist back like in 2007 that, that led- depicted something. Yes. The guy had death threats. He had like a hundred thousand dollar like bounty on his head if someone murdered People were him. killed for that though. People at that publication. I can't remember. It was Charlie Hebdo, right? Um, I, I've, but yeah. yeah. Now I'm not saying so, as, as Christians we have to live to what we're called to do which is right, which right. is to have that But it, uh, But it would seem and and several of the news reports that I saw one of them included the interview of the artist who created this um, and again there's so many different things coming at us that you know doing this Last Supper thing is a possibility that that's what he was going for. You know, that... that, that yeah, it I looks mean, like... Well, it was actually quite strong that they were going for this, right? The lady that was sitting in the center posted on her social media this, this um, you know, the, the Leonardo da Vinci um, painting and, and made references saying like, oh yes, oh yes, the gay New Testament with exclamation marks, right? That's so it's right. like... Mm-hmm. so, And then when the, the backlash came hours after it gets changed and it it all of a sudden is now a different painting and i'm like well there's two options right either you have a set of artists that you hired for the olympic um opening that are completely incompetent or you have someone that is just back paddling on something that backfired and let's think about the apology i mean the one that i saw from the olympic committee was like i'm sorry you were offended Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's not, I mean, we right. all know, right? <laughs> that's not it's an kind of apology. marriage 101, like, how you don't well, apologize. I, you yeah. just took the words out of my mouth. You know, if my husband said to me, I'm sorry you were offended, I'd be like, uh, still not good enough, you know? Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. and that's part of it too. Like, yeah. it was and like, I'm sorry what we did offended you. It wasn't, listen, and maybe just to pony up sometime and be like, we blew it. Like, all of us yeah. were hyped up about this idea. We didn't realize it or whatever. Like, you know, Arnold said, like, it's pretty clear, uh, uh, but maybe not. Listen, things, I don't know about you. I go into the cupboard six times looking for the can of chickpeas and it's right in front of me and I don't see it. It's quite possible. You're all hyped up. There's a lot of details. There's millions of people that you missed it. Just admit that. I think that would have, like, prompted a heck of a lot more grace mm-hmm. than what, what they got. Off- offense taken. And by the way, I think I actually missed that whole part. I was enjoying the opening ceremony. It was kind of cool. The boats. Johnny, your favorite back, Celine Dion. I know you have a couple albums somewhere in the oh. car if we went in there. How'd you know? Yeah. But, you know, it it was kind of a cool ceremony, but you can't mock our Jesus. Right. And then There's like, no way. Yeah. Listen, no. hey, they, they kind of at first said that it could have been the Feast of the Gods they were interpreting, but then yeah. they accidentally dressed in the colors as the Thus Supper in their positions. It's kind of weird, but... Listen, my thoughts, if I could share for a minute here on Art of Heaven News Talk, right? My thoughts are, seriously, why do we get all outraged? I, I can't get myself outraged. This is the world. Why are we shocked over the world being the world, okay? Now, if this happened in a church by a church, I'd be flipping tables, I think, right? But the, the key words for me is as outraged and, you know, tweeting all these things. Now, Jesus said himself. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's that's Arnold's favorite word is cheers. Cheers. Yeah, I say that a lot. Yeah, (laughs) but you know the net is you know like we can debate about intent, right? And and you can never prove intent. But it's kind of you know the committee had already stated that it was related to the to that supper, and then you have this key character that posted things. So it's kind of hard. So I don't I, I don't bring these things up to like condemn people or to you know to show anger but i do that just because i like to keep things real but i agree with you you know there's no point in being angry with people that don't have a relationship with christ because at the end of the day you know you can get them to follow the rules it's not going to save them the relationship with christ will though christ saves and i think that's that's very important to, to keep that in mind and then you know obviously 
none of the mocking is a surprise. God talked about it. Jesus talked about it. It's it's in the in the book. The only thing I would say to those people that aren't choosing Christ but are choosing the world is to read ahead. You know, because there's <laughs> there is there is a, a good solution, and and I think if you read ahead, you, you deserve to know the full story. Yeah, be an educated consumer. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, reading ahead. In John, I'll just pull that one out, you know, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the Father, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Now that's that's looking ahead right there, Arnold. Yeah. And and, and I just want to say, like, you know, that table, all the people that were at the table in Paris, Jesus would have had you, if you had lived in his time, at his table. He was known to hang out with drunks, with all kinds of sinners. It doesn't matter. He loves you. He doesn't love your sin, but he loves you. And I yeah. think that's a key, key point to keep in mind as well. On, on the flip side, though, Dan, mm. I mean, panel here. There was a man's genitalia hanging out. If you didn't see that picture. Oh, I totally missed this. And there was kids right nearby. So oh, yeah. there's got to be like a little bit of slow to anger side of, yeah. side of I'll, you well, know. And there's a it. cultural difference as well, right? We talked at some point about this portal between cities and stuff like that. There is like, if you go to a beach in Europe, you know, people walk around topless. If you go to France and you go to like Moulin Rouge in Paris, you know, you'll see shows where, you know, a lot of things are visible. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it is a, a big cultural difference. What they should have kept in mind, though, is they have a global audience and that's what you should have tailored your opening for. I mean, isn't France a little risque anyway? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is. And that's totally their choice. Yeah. That's their choice. I mean, you know, we're not to be judge and jury. That's their choice. Um, but to Arnold's point is it's a global program. There's kids watching it. There's parents watching it. There's people watching it. And, you know, so okay. just keep that in mind. I did watch The Lighting of the Ring. And I thought that was amazing. That was pretty they cool. They handed the torches off and they, they lit the ring and it... it Fueled a hot air balloon, which took off, right? Now that was that was pretty cool. Um, but and Celine Dion was great. I'm so yes. happy for her. I know she's dealing with some significant mm-hmm. medical issues. She's not been on a stage for like four years, and she works so hard. I've seen some videos of her condition, stiff, um, stiff person, stiff syndrome, person, yeah. condi- and uh, so I, I applaud her in particular. And then again, that where is all of that? compared yeah. to this other stuff. Yeah, this got happened. buried. There there, yeah. there, was a neat one I liked. There was an uh, Italian athlete who, in the process of either waving the flag or while he was on the boat, during the opening ceremony, his wedding ring fell off and he wrote a poem publicly to his wife and he said, let's take your ring and throw it in there together wow. oh, and we'll get married so together. Sweet. Yeah, so there's better. Yeah. Again, why do you show up and mock Christ in this? There's just no reason. We could have all had a good time. Hey, there's mm-hmm. a lot of symbolism. One cool thing, I kind of, I don't know. I'm just into this book of revelations type of like, you know what I mean? Maybe it's the little kid Johnny in me, but there was a pale white horse that was raced across. Now, I was watching some some YouTuber and, and they were saying that it could possibly represent this verse in Revelations that said, I look and therefore before me was a pale white horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind. Like, you know, so there, there's so much to talk about this thing. I'm not trying to get too crazy and say that this is the end of the world. The, the, the Olympics is bringing on the end. But there is, there is stuff that broke as of last night that is like a whole nother segment in this story that we will briefly share on Arnold can you catch us before we go there right I I do have a question right and maybe you can help answer this why would the LGBTQ plus people want to be associated with with perversion all right you you got me I ain't touching that (laughs) (laughs) but who's to say but who's to say there are I, I think you're at we're adding another layer of complexity by talking about um the, the sexuality of those that portrayed that or even portraying Jesus as a woman. Like, I think the whole thing's perverse in nature. Um, I, I don't know why. I think just to make a broader spectacle 
Um, I didn't see what you saw. Yeah, and, 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 and just and it's a very good point. I don't think all the, um, the lesbian, gay, you know, BTQ uh, plus people are this way, right? Because the people that I know are not this way. But but at the same time, you know, I see on like uh, uh, Pride.com, there's like there's you know they're like the, the, it's kind of satanic the comments that are being made. And so, you know, you have the caption there on that website, like this drag queen dressed as a satanic goddess to read to kids. That was one of the headlines. And you're like, why? Right. But then now we can add Paris to this. And then I think, you know, when, when you're outside, and maybe this is just my theory on it, is like once you go outside of the realm of what God describes as uh, what we should do, you know, the satanic influences have a way in and i think a, a part of this is just again back to you know lacking god it, it comes down to what you believe what are your values yeah. and your core morals inside your relationship with the creator whoever you think is is the one running the show or the relationship with the spiritual yeah. realm right i mean there's a flip side of this too so if you have those core beliefs then are you are you intimidated? Do you fear man worse than you fear God? Because a lot of these people, they kind of give that community a voice, but I don't think it's necessarily because, you know, they care. They think they're just fearing. It's almost like if you're in a relationship with somebody, you know, and, they, and they're, just, they're just a difficult person, you know what I mean? No matter what you do. That's kind of how I see it. Uh, it's it's like you don't want to feel the wrath, you know. Yeah. You avoid it. That's I, I don't know. If I'm I was just thinking here. it's important not to be or to come across, especially as Christians, as judgmental. Because I am, you know, reminding myself every single day as I look at things not to judge, because I am also saved by grace and I get angry and I say things that are not edifying. And I do things that are not great or what I've done in my life, certainly as I look back before I was walking more faithfully in my Christian walk, mm -hmm. that, you know, you're asking why would they be interested in whatever? Um, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to be judgmental. We're just, listen, you look, um, you look back in yeah. time, but I'm not saying you are, I'm saying no. it could come across that way. And then what happens is what you see next in the news is, you know, the Christians, are not walking the walk, you know, yeah. and talking the talk. They're just kind of being judgmental. Um, you know, it's just important for the Christians. I mean, that's what we're, that's why we're here on this show to um, just say, you know, listen, I love you. God loves you. This Absolutely. is how I choose to live my life. And if you want to know a bit more about it, I'm your girl or guy. Yeah. You know, I think that's yeah, our like, ultimate responsibility. Yeah, like I said earlier, I don't think there's any point in getting them to uh, adhere to rules that, that I would go by but I think the point is more about like if I were to have a straight marriage day in the public park and a celebration and I would have that type of a display that would be there would be problems I think. but I think I think Carol to your to your point right we all fall short we, we all yes. are not worthy we all can't earn uh, what I believe is you know in, in our salvation story so I think it's it's hard to kind of put that on the spot I think just, just back to this, Johnny, right? I think we can't be judgmental, but we, we can take a stand and we can call out uh, when there is this kind of this open mockery. And it does happen in churches. We've seen mega churches do things that are against Christianity um, for, for whatever the purpose. But I think we can take a stand, but we can't judge. But, right. No, and, and the message really is read ahead because mm -hmm. you know you want to know how the story ends but now to get back to what johnny well, was trying to get right to. there i'm about to get there i already have a news <laughs> okay. talk you're listening to if you want to join the conversation and share your thoughts the number is 516-572-7440 now this next story though you could take take any stance like you don't have to be a uh, christian or any other faith to share your thoughts on this aspect of the Olympics. Let's hear it. I don't know yeah, so Angela Carini, right, Italian, um, arrived at the Paris Olympics to uh, to honor her late father, but instead, 40 seconds um, in, she uh, had to, you know, she took the loss to Iman Khalif. Um, and that has sparked, you know, a gender row uh, that could overshadow the games, right? And, and so... Uh, you know, Caleb, a biological woman with differences in sex development condition, apparently, was still given the green light 
to compete in Paris. And, you know, she failed uh, the, the gender test to compete with women uh, in, in prior competitions, but, but here she was allowed. And I think what, one of the things we could maybe uh, clearly see is that they don't really belong in the same group um, to compete against. So. so a girl was boxing a guy. That is what's alleged. We really don't know if what the story is. I, I mean, there's a lot where there was a lot of failures for this genetic testing that they've been doing, or, or you know, to re, to Arnold, what you're saying about the testosterone levels, or it. But this isn't a non-competitive sport. This is boxing, and I believe we watched a male beat a woman in a professional arena in a sport, and it only took 40 seconds, and you could see her. Just the power of the punches against her. Like, I, it's awful. Like, there's there's no... These athletes spend their entire lives. She was trying to dedicate this to her, her father who had passed. And then to show up as a female boxer and get in a ring with a man is just uh, not acceptable for me. But, but I am a man giving commentary here. So, Carol, I really have to defer to you. <laughs> yeah. this. I don't have a leg to stand on with this. Well, I think that the idea is that, uh, you know, we got to keep an open mind. I think everyone came out really quickly to decide, you know, what was happening here. And now we're getting more information that there is maybe something genetically here that um, has predispositioned the other fighter to have more testosterone again it's all coming out now um so at the end of the day it's the olympic committee's responsibility to protect their athletes and if you know i'm coming up against michael jordan <laughs> i'm just being overplayed and he's just a better athlete than i am if this is a case of one athlete just being better than the other i remember when my son was young and we would go to karate tournaments and my son um, was in an, a higher class because of his um, age, so 13, but he was also like three foot nothing. He was an extremely late bloomer. And we would go to these karate fights, and here's my little Christopher at like three feet tall fighting a kid the exact same age who was like six feet tall, you know, because he was an early bloomer. And we would just sit there, and I would be sick to my stomach. Like, how is Christopher ever going? And of course, he lost every time because literally the person would just tap Christopher on the head with their glove. So, but they were the same age. Um, they just one had an advantage due to how God made them. So, I, I, I just don't know. But I, I understand in prior uh, competitions, this person was disqualified or unable to fight. So if anything, either the rules should be consistent or people should be aware of the rules. Like, I didn't know I was going to walk into this thing and see my little three-foot kid with, like, some six-foot person. Of course, the next year that we went, we were fully prepared for this dynamic. Right. Yeah, and so, I, think, I think there is a, a, a challenge here. You mentioned it. I think we need consistency. I think one of the things we need is transparency, right? Because it isn't always clear-cut. Like, sometimes, uh, for, I'm just doing some of the research in preparation, you know, like, some I, I'm hearing doctors say, you know, sometimes you can have two X chromosomes and that would result in you being a woman and then when you have an XY chromosome it would result in you becoming a man but they're also saying the Y chromosome enables you to get male genitalia and and get the features of a male uh, but it doesn't always activate um, at the right time so so then they're also saying that this may not be a. Tr this is not a transgender. A person that converted. This is a person that has like a, a natural growth, and and so was identified in some ways as a, as a woman, in some ways not. The net of it is though that the testosterone has kicked in, and so the muscles developed like those of of a man. And so how do you now classify that? And I think acknowledging that and being transparent with that, being forthcoming with that up front. It, I think is key because because you know I I mean I'm not I'm not but, athletic but, at all but if I'm going into the Olympic Games there's a lot of investment training and and money and time goes into that but exactly my point but yeah. right how come immediately after the fight that country or this person doesn't come forward and say this is my condition we're seeing in Olympics where there's other Agreed. nations been disqualified for sketchy stuff and Agreed. genetically modifying either males or females so they can compete at this level. That's all I'm saying. There's enough smoke, I think, in this one. There's fire. Again, I know we want to sensationalize the news. <laughs> but if you watch the fight, that looks... It doesn't look right. 
Right. So if no. you have this not condition, talking, not we're also not talking thing. about doping, right? Like back no, in the no, day, no, no, no. Um, you know, where <laughs> oh my athletes gosh. were, you <laughs> yes. know, doing their thing. You remember yeah. that term, oh, right? For sure. I mean, this is not that, you know, and we do want to be inclusive and respectful and not disqualify people just because they're made differently. I mean, that's not where we're headed either. I agree. No, different but class. Dis- that's right, all. Yeah. Right. Disclosure. Yeah. yeah. I'm making sure the athletes know um, and, and really looking at these athletes. Like you said, when the punch came in, Everybody was like, oh, like that punch was. And again, if she's a more superior athlete, it is what it is. It is. But if there's it, it, there's it something is what else it is. at play here. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, my heart breaks for the girl, though. Yeah. It does. And I, I actually wish she would have just beat the snot out of that dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> deep down. But there's a whole lot of stories this week. Uh, the Olympics, you know, is, is a huge one this week. And I'm glad we got to spend some time on it. But I kind of want to catch up on a couple more headlines. Let's go to drive by headlines here. Wait a minute. Drive-by headlines. One of the biggest and most complex prisoner swaps in U.S. history took place this week. This prisoner swap was between Russia and the United States. The exchange took place in an airport in Turkey involving seven different planes. This is like some something out of an action movie. I love this. 24 prisoners were exchanged. Representatives from U.S., Germany, Poland, Slovenia, Norway, and Russia were involved. And supposedly, this deal was brokered over the past year on the low. You know, or is that what the Biden administration is trying to get credit for? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but supposedly, <laughs> it, was, it was brokered over the last year. Two prisoners came home. Evan Gershkovic, a Wall Street Journal reporter who was accused, arrested and accused of espionage back in 2023. And Paul Whelan former Marine who was arrested back in 2018, accused of being a spy. Hey, can you imagine after that many years? I'm glad that these Americans are home. Um, It should have happened a lot sooner. Um, We we managed to bail out a a basketball athlete a year before these two individuals. I don't know how it happened. It is like a Tom Cruise movie in the background. Somebody, you know, there'll be a real story in this, but let's welcome them home. I mean, on the flip side, Russia got back a hitman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. it's slanted. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, yeah. crazy, and and that doesn't leave a good impression of America either. But yeah, and there's some still there. You know, yeah. not everybody came home. For sure, yeah. so you know, families and, yeah. obviously are concerned because why not their family? Yeah, yeah, they're they're talking about pro- prioritizing mm-hmm. people. Yeah, well, this has been another art of having news talk in the books. Thank you for joining us. I want to thank Dan Bartucci. Arnold Kokok and Carol Duty. Check us here next Friday. God bless. Good weekend.